Hey everyone, Marcus here from the Ashland Fly Shop. And today we're gonna to be tying a little muddler leech that I've been thinking about and working on for a little bit. Um, we got pretty cold water here on the Rogue, so we're starting to fish some bigger flies. And we also have winter right around the corner, so I wanted to tie something a little bit larger profile, um, something with some movement. Um, so follow along with us here, we'll tie this fly. So we're gonna start on a 26 millimeter Aquaflies round eye shank. And this is a pretty relatively long fly, but it doesn't take a really big shank to get that profile. Um, so I'm gonna start wrapping my 50 denier Vivas gel spun thread back to the back here. And then I always use Fireline um, 30 pound and white to trail my hook. So I'll clip, you know, four and a half inches of that off. Today I'm going to have an owner SSW size four hook. Could also be tied with a size two. So we'll take the 30 pound fire line, fold it in half and kind of match um, the tip ends there. And then I've got an owner SSW size four. And I just grab those tip ends of the fire line. and feed them through the eye. And then you just wrap that around the shank of the hook. And then you got two tags coming out. And then I buy this really cheap rubber tubing from the craft store. I think it's like three bucks. And you can get it in some different colors, but I end up using black more than anything. And I'm just gonna cut a little section of that. Slide the fire line through there, nice and simple, super easy. And then right here is something, because this fire line over time will become less stiff. So you need something that keeps that hook in the same place that's gonna help it stay stiff so I grab this tubing and I kind of roll it which takes some time and this way once you have the fire line or the tubing sucked over the eye that thing isn't going to move much over time which is nice and then the one thing you have to factor in when you're laying this down is in theory, the last part of the shank is going to come up into the tubing. So you got to look in the vise and think about how much extra shank you have left in there and lay the tubing right so that it can take up all that room when we're done and that the tubing sits kind of right exactly how you want it. So I've got the tubing hanging off where I want it here. And I'm going to wrap. Get some nice tight wraps on this thread coming up the shank. Fold the fire line 180. And then get some nice wraps this way too. Just kind of secure that in place. Now for the very back end of this fly, I'm not sure it totally needs it, but I wrap a little bit of purple flashaboo off the back end. I think, you know, if you had a smaller shank or if you just wanted to have a bigger station on the front end, you could probably get away without doing this little back piece, but um, I like
like to have it take up some of the room on the shank here. So I'm just going to wrap this purple flash forward here and trap these fibers. Cut them off. And then I'm going to have a dubbing loop here. This loop will carry a lot of the materials that make up this fly. With this really thin thread, if you're using gel spun thread, it's fairly important with a dubbing loop to get some wax on it because it's so thin that it doesn't grab materials as well as a as a little bit thicker thread so you really want to get get some wax in there to help hold these materials and I'm going to throw some ice dub on here chartreuse or caddis green um, just to present a little hot spot at the back of the fly Slide that guy up there. Might even do just a little bit more. And then to prop some of the materials we're using, I'm going to have Predator Wrap in the purple color. I think it's purple, gold, and black. And I like to just kind of cut it off, off the main hank there. And I seem to like to have shorter fibers towards the back end. So I'll cut those about an inch in length, lay them in here, kind of space them out. And then I'll even do some more, but I'll do these ones longer. So those will be about an inch and a half. Slide those up. And then I'm just going to start spinning. And this predator wrap can get kind of trapped on itself. So I like to just pick everything out. I'm just going to create a nice big dubbing ball at the back here. And then with the predator wrap, as I do these wraps, I um, just want to be conscious to pull everything back and really make sure that when it's laying down, everything's poking up how I want it. That is a nice big ball. <laughs> Just going to tie off our loop here. I am going to kind of wrap back on that guy a little bit. 
And then on top of that, I'm gonna use rabbit strip in black. And this, how long you use the rabbit is totally up to personal preference. Um, but I like to have it come kind of online or, or just past the hook where it dangles past the fly. So I'll cut this guy. Right about there. Could do it shorter or longer. It's a nice thing about rabbit is, you know, you get to use a short shank, a relatively small canvas, but you can make a big profile out of it. And the nice thing about this predator wrap, you see that um, just gives it that nice ball shape and it holds that rabbit up and it's going to hold the next material that we're going to put in here up pretty good too. So on top of that rabbit, I'm going to have just a, a little bit of um, purple marabou and I'm even going to pull away from this a little bit. Grab the tips here. Find a good tie-in point. I'll just tie it in right where it's starting to twist there. Kind of wrap back a little bit there. And then I'll start to wrap this marabou. Trap that stem. And for a little accent on this fly, I'm going to use a couple relatively narrow. barred saddle hackles. So I'm going to come, you know, a saddle, you've got all the thick stuff at the top, thinner stuff at the bottom. I'm going to grab a few of the more narrow ones. And these are going to hang over the top of the fly here. So I just try to Get those tips together as close as you can. Peel away just a little bit to tie them in there. I'll rotate my vise so I'm looking right, right down the fly. And I'll tie one canted off to the left. Another one will go off to the right. Now, starting to look good now. That's not going to be the only accent we're going to put on this little guy. We got a little crinkle flash olive. And I really just like to have two or three strands of this stuff. So I'm just going to pick out two to three, clip it right there. And I'm going to 
I'll rotate the vise so you can see what I'm doing, but I lay them along the left side, tie them in on the left, and then I always just grab, pull across the top, and make them so that they're coming off the right side of the fly too. And I always for whatever reason, that seems to be how I really like my flash, just a couple strands coming through like a lateral line. Um, now, as if there wasn't enough accent on this fly, we're going to use Aquafly's new Unreal Jungle Cock alternatives. Now where you put these is totally up to preference. Um, I'm gonna try and line them up I think with these barred feathers that I put in here. And right off the bat, I do notice with these feathers that that was a lot easier to do than with a real piece of jungle cock. Um, just because you're not working with a really fine stem, which is actually pretty dang nice. So you could tie the fly just like this if you wanted. Um, put a little guinea collar on it or a little saddle hackle collar. It would be a pretty cool fly. But <laughs> we're going to change it up. We're going to put a little muddler head on this guy. Um, so this is dyed purple deer hair. And I'm going to pull off a pretty good chunk of this stuff. Um, so I've got quite a bit of it and the first thing I always do with hair is I just grab the top and pull out a lot of that under under fur so you've got the hair stacked in your left hand and you, you always want to bring it through some type of brush a couple times because um, you just got all this under fur that you don't don't really want in your fly so I've got the hair here Got my trusty Dr. Slick hair stacker. Goes with me everywhere. Just give it a couple taps. And then you've got all the tips lined out here. And the way I do deer hair heads a lot of the time, just change fingers here get to the length that I want on hanging back on the collar. And then I'm going to switch hands here, take all this excess and I'm going to cut. But when I do it, I'm going to leave enough excess that when I start to wrap this, it, it starts to build this muddler head. So we're going to do one soft wrap and then the next is a hard hat or hard wrap and I'm going to grab all these materials. See how it just spins around. And I don't mind with thread this thin actually. I don't mind coming through the hair like that a little bit. Just kind of push this back and get a nice workable area at the front to finish this fly. And it definitely, you know, definitely gives the fly a different vibe having that 
big old head on there. Time will tell what the fish think about it. But I like it. One of the hardest things with a hair head is not trapping those fibers as you're finishing the fly. So you can see I come in with the whip finisher, slide my fingers over the eye, and just pull all that hair back. All right. Now, this is a super subjective part of the fly here, is, is what the head is going to look like. This last one here that I did, you can see totally flat across the bottom. Um, and I kind of like that look. Um, so I'm going to do this one that way, um, but you have, have the freedom to create whatever type of head you want it to look like. So because I'm left-handed, and we'll try and do all this clipping and trimming on camera, I'm going to switch the vise around and that way I can clip with my left hand make sure that it's all visible here. So I'm going to come in totally level and whether you want to just clip the head or you want a flat surface of materials. You can see on this last one I clipped the materials too. This one I think I'm going to leave the materials but just clip a nice flat bottom surface to this head. And I just try to shape these things so they have a look that seems appealing. I'm going to leave this one a little bit bigger, I think. A little bit less trimmed down. I'll take the fly out of the vise here. And this is what I was talking about with the tubing. So you got your shank hangs back there. You got to pull the tubing up, slide it through the shank there. Kind of straighten everything out. And then see if this flies at a point where we like what we're looking at here. Comment below. You think the head should be trimmed a little bit? Think it should cut all the materials like this one and leave it flat? Or whether it should, all the materials should come around the fly like that? I, I think I like this second version that we just made a little bit better. Um, so thank you very much for tuning in. This is a idea that's been living in my head for a little bit. Um, cool little muddler leech idea. I like um, kind of the splayed out feathers on this one. Gives it a nice big profile. Um, this is what I'll be fishing this weekend. Hopefully we can include a photo here of this, this fly in a fish's mouth. Um, this is just one color combo that I was feeling in the moment, but you could do a bunch of different stuff. Olive would be cool. It could even be a, a pretty dang cool trout fly if you did it in olive or brown. Um, so thank you very much for tuning in.